Hi, I'm Mr. Steve, and today's Bible story is one that is pretty interesting because it's the only story in the Bible that gives us any kind of insight at all into what happened to Jesus when he was growing up. We read in the Bible about Jesus' birth. We read in the Bible about Jesus' teaching and his miracles, and we read about his crucifixion, but we don't know very much at all about what happened when Jesus was a child, except for this one story. And this story is one that I can relate to because as a parent, what I went through is something like what Jesus' parents went through in this story. And you may have been there because you can probably imagine how your parents would react in this situation. So there's a man named Luke who wrote two books in the Bible. One was Acts and the other one was called, wait for it, wait for it, Luke. And this was reported in the book of Luke. Luke tells us that every year Jesus and his parents went to the city of Jerusalem for the Passover festival. Now, when Jesus was 12, they went to the festival as usual. The trip from their home to Nazareth was about 60 miles or maybe a little bit more, and they were on foot. Now, families and friends used to travel together, carry their supplies and their food with them for the journey, and it could take as much as a week. Now, today, you could go the same distance on the roads that are there in a car in about an hour, a little more than an hour, maybe. But back in Jesus' youth, there weren't any cars, so that's the way they had to go. I like to compare the experience of traveling like that to something you might think of. This is kind of like going from Broomfield to Fort Collins, walking along I-25. 25, without the traffic, of course. Families and friends were traveling together, and there were lots of crowds. But uh, picture you, your friends, and your family walking along I-25 up to Fort Collins, carrying everything you need for a couple of weeks away from home. Well, Jesus probably spent the days of traveling, hanging out with his cousins and friends as they walked along the journey, and they'd come back together with his parents at dinner time. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what Jesus thought or felt as they approached the city of Jerusalem, which was located on a rocky hillside. You might think about how if you were walking up to Fort Collins, how you might feel as you finally got there after a long walk. And uh, most of you would probably just feel relieved that you don't have to walk any farther. But Jesus probably had some other thoughts. And years later, Jesus would enter Jerusalem again to crowds of cheering people but for now, he was here just to celebrate the Passover festival with his family. All week, Jesus' family celebrated the festival with their relatives in Jerusalem. The people remembered how God had rescued their ancestors from Egypt long, long ago. And when the festival was over, Mary and Joseph began the long walk back. Now we're thinking about heading south from Fort Collins back to Broomfield. And the roads were certainly crowded, just as crowded as when they went up. And Mary and Joseph and the rest of their companions traveled for a full day before Jesus' parents realized something important. Jesus wasn't there. Think about how your parents would feel if you were on that trip and they couldn't find you, they just walked a day's worth, about maybe a quarter of the way between Fort Collins and Broomfield, and suddenly they realize 
You were supposed to be on that trip, and you weren't there. So his parents frantically searched for Jesus among their relatives and friends and couldn't find him. So, of course, Mary and Joseph had no choice. They had to hurry back to Jerusalem and look for Jesus. They searched for three days, and finally they found him. He was in the temple courtyard. He sat there with the teachers, listening to them teach and asking questions. And everyone who heard Jesus speak was amazed at how much he seemed to understand and the answers he gave when the teachers asked him questions. And as Jesus' parents looked on, they were amazed too. They were amazed, but they were also his parents. And they were understandably hacked off at him. Here's what Luke tells us that Mary said. Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been worried about you. We have been looking for you everywhere. Sound like maybe what your parents would say under the same circumstances? But Luke reports that Jesus answered this way. Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Jesus' parents didn't quite understand what he was saying there, but we can bet that they were extremely relieved to have found their son. I mean, I can remember when my daughter was in high school and went off someplace with her best friend and didn't tell me where she was going, and I was pretty aggravated too. But I was so relieved when she turned up. So it's like this clash of emotions that his parents must have had. They were mad that he'd wandered off, but they were so glad that they had found it. Well, after that, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus returned to Nazareth. And according to what Luke tells us, Jesus obeyed everything his parents asked of him. And as he grew, Jesus became wiser and stronger. He also became more and more pleasing to God and people. Jesus is the perfect example of what it looks like to search for wisdom. He went to the temple searching for wisdom. He went there because he knew that's where he could find wisdom. He talked to the teachers who taught the laws of God. And as Jesus grew up, he continued to gain wisdom. That's something that we can do too. We can search for God's wisdom just like Jesus did. Wisdom is worth searching for.